After nearly a decade of research and development, we can finally see Blue Origin starting to get serious about the development of their first orbital rocket, New Glenn. And with the recent appearance of the rocket's first and second stage, Blue Origin and NASA have successfully set a new launch date for New Glenn, positioning it precisely as a starship killer. So, what is Blue Origin prepared for the New Glenn rocket launch to outshine SpaceX? Can they really catch up with SpaceX? Does NASA feel threatened about its Mars payload after choosing New Glenn? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. On the 26th of last month, NASA announced that the mission involving New Glenn scheduled for launch October 13th with the Escapade mission. This is the right time for a journey to Mars, which happens every 26 months when Earth's in perfect position relative to Mars for efficient travel. Blue Origin's first New Glenn rocket is going to take off from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, officially making its debut after years of delays in development. On September 4th, the company confidently posted some exciting images of New Glenn's second stage, which is said to be the actual flight hardware. The launch company is targeting a hot fire test of the upper stage, powered by two BE-3U engines within about a week. We're looking forward to firing up those two BE-3Us on New Glenn's second stage in a few days, they said. Moreover, the arrival of an unmanned ship named Jacqueline at Port Canaveral, painted blue and bearing Blue Origin's distinctive feather logo on September 4th, further signals that the first launch of New Glenn is finally approaching, with bold efforts to land the rocket's first stage. Welcome home, Jacqueline. This sea-based landing platform is where New Glenn's reusable booster will return home again and again after each mission to be quickly refurbished for its next flight, Blue Origins said in a post. According to Space Offshore, Jacqueline's 380 feet long and 150 feet wide, equivalent to 116 by 46 meters, making it smaller than SpaceX's drone ships, which are about 170 meters, 560 feet long, and 50 meters, 160 feet wide. The new unmanned ship, named after Bezos's mom, with a billionaire founder of Blue origin is nicknamed Jacqueline. However, the ship's legal name is Landing Platform Vessel Number 1. Jacqueline's a new ship specifically designed to serve as a landing platform for New Glenn. The ship's construction started in Romania last year and was completed in Brest, France around last month. Jacqueline departed from Brest to Florida August 8th. The early arrival of Blue Origin's drone ship clearly demonstrates their goal of completing a booster landing on New Glenn's very first launch. However, we must remember that success isn't guaranteed, as SpaceX was unable to land its first Falcon 9 on the ocean until the rocket's 23rd launch. But Bezos and Blue Origin are determined to collect as much data as possible from New Glenn's maiden flight to achieve larger booster reusability ASAP. Whether they succeed or not, this effort's going to be exciting for sure, as New Glenn will become a formidable competitor for SpaceX. New Glenn joins SpaceX's Falcon Heavy and Starship as privately developed heavy lift rockets. Its launch will solidify the trend in U.S. spaceflight towards large, reusable, commercially developed rockets. Both Bezos and SpaceX founder Elon Musk have identified lower-cost, rapidly reusable rockets as the key to expanding human activity in space. Most notably, with a scheduled launch in early next month, New Glenn's launch will coincide with the fifth flight of the world's largest rocket, Starship. We don't know if there's any favoritism here, like with the Starliner launch ahead of Starship Flight 4, where the government agency prioritized Boeing over SpaceX, but in this case, it's going to be Blue Origin's New Glenn, and if that happens, we might have to wait quite a while for the launch, but hopefully that's not going to happen again. We do need some fairness among licensing agencies. But Blue Origin still has a lot of work to do in the upcoming months if New Glenn's was supposed to be ready to launch with the Escapade mission to Mars during this year's launch window. Blue Origin's not yet completed a New Glenn rocket during a countdown rehearsal, and hasn't fully loaded cryogenic fuel into the launch vehicle, and has not fully tested the first or second stage engines. These activities typically occur months before the first launch of a new orbital rocket. For comparison, SpaceX tested its first fully assembled Falcon 9 rocket on the launch pad about three months before its first flight in 2010. ULA completed a hot fire test of its Vulcan rocket on the launch pad last year, about seven months prior to its first flight. However, Blue Origin is making clear progress towards New Glenn's first flight after years of speculation and few signs of external progress. Earlier this year, the company rolled a fully assembled 320-foot New Glenn rocket to the launch pad at Cape Canaveral Space Station and loaded liquid nitrogen into it, a cryogenic substitute for the liquid methane and liquid hydrogen it's going to burn during flight. 
More recently, Blue Origin lifted a full-scale test booster with a crane at Port Canaveral, a few miles south of the launch pad, to demonstrate how the company will recover New Glenn's reusable booster from its landing barge. When it reaches Mars, the twin escapade spacecraft will measure plasma and magnetic fields around the red planet. With simultaneous observations from two locations around Mars, scientists hope to learn more about the processes stripping atoms from the magnetosphere and upper atmosphere, driving climate change on Mars. Rocket Lab designed, built, and tested the two escapade spacecraft in just over three years, a relatively fast pace for an interplanetary science mission. NASA selected the Escapade mission for development in 2019 as part of a new class of small planetary science missions, where scientists could propose concepts for modest probes to explore the solar system. Escapade was initially set to launch as a piggyback payload with NASA's Psyche asteroid mission in 2022, but the agency decided to move the Psyche launch from a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to the bigger Falcon Heavy. So they changed their launch targets, and in doing so, it kind of broke our mission design, or at least very nearly broke it, Rob Lillis, the mission's lead scientist from Berkeley Space Science Laboratory, said. We had to do a rapid redesign of the spacecraft in the mission with only about two months prior to our preliminary design review back in 2020, and it was a disaster, he said. We failed our PDR, but it really wasn't our fault, so NASA gave us another couple million dollars, and it was 10 more months to come up with a mission design that was resilient and flexible and could work with a range of different launch options. The redesign resulted in size growth for the escapade probes and a change in spacecraft builders from TVAC to Rocket Lab. So that was the first thing, and then there were certainly challenges on the Rocket Lab side, Lillis said. The thruster changed. There were also significant problems getting tanks delivered, so they really went into hero mode. They went and actually spun up an entire internal 3D tank printing capability from nothing. Once things started looking shaky with this tank supplier, they came through. The Escapade spacecraft is based on Rocket Lab's Explorer class design, a new version of the Photon spacecraft platform itself derived from the kickstage of the company's Electron rocket. We've already been to the moon for NASA, so we're excited to build on that and send Rocket Lab technology deeper into the solar system, this time to the Red Planet. Rocket Lab founder and CEO Sir Peter Beck said in a statement, Our space systems team has a beautiful and highly capable pair of spacecraft to help NASA and the University of California, Berkeley, further humanity's understanding of Mars. The time pressure on Blue Origin is growing as New Glenn races to be ready for the narrow launch window of the Escapade mission to Mars. A large rocket like New Glenn still faces limitations, including the inability to send Escapade directly to Mars after the end of October. Given these constraints, it wouldn't be surprising if New Glenn isn't ready to fully launch Escapade within this narrow time frame. However, there are important factors at play that make NASA more willing to accept certain risks with this mission. Escapade, being a relatively low-cost mission, allows NASA some flexibility. In contrast with higher-stakes missions worth billions of dollars, NASA can afford to take a bit more risk with Escapade. This isn't a mission like the $5 billion Europa Clipper, where a proven rocket would be mandatory. Instead, Escapade is part of NASA's Venture Class acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare Program, which is designed to launch lower-cost missions with a reduced oversight. It's worth noting that these contracts come with fewer stringent requirements than the more traditional launch contracts used for expensive of flagship missions. VADR essentially serves as a testing ground for emergency launch providers to demonstrate their capabilities without the same level of scrutiny. This means NASA is more willing to give companies like BO a shot, even if the rocket hasn't yet fully proven itself in flight. This lower-risk, low-cost approach aligns with NASA's goal of fostering innovation in the commercial spaceflight industry, allowing companies like Blue Origin to get experience with actual payloads. Assuming Escapade does launch this year, the twin spacecraft would arrive in orbit around Mars on September 1st and 3rd in 2025. Once there, they'll begin their scientific investigations, studying plasma and magnetic fields around Mars, which could provide insights into how Mars's atmosphere has been stripped away over time. This data is key for understanding the climate history and whether or not we could potentially live there. However, if Escapade misses the 2024 launch window, the consequences could be pretty big. The next opportunity to launch towards Mars won't happen until late 2026 due to the alignment of Earth and Mars, which occurs only every 26 months. This means a delay would set the mission by over two years, which would not only impact scientific objectives, but also increase costs for mission operations and storage. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.